And welcome to the Continental Endurance Sportscar Series, sponsored by Safecraft Racing. Your home for safety harnesses, belts and headnets. Drive fast, be safe, Safecraft Racing. So, welcome to um, Homestead, Miami. We are on the Road B course today for a 90-minute race, featuring the Sport 2 and MX-5s and the Grand Sport Mustangs. And I'm joined in my commentary booth with, uh, by Phil Diaz. Hello, Phil. Hello, Rob. I think uh, we're going to enjoy this race today. We've got um, 23 people uh, taking part, 23 drivers taking part. We're just about to go to the um, pace car now. So we'll run you through the order uh, in a few minutes. And we are, so we are in the third round, a 90-minute race. Um, in first position, we have Trace McRae. Then second, we have Brian Stodbeck. In third position, Oscar Salin. In fourth position, Russell Cleason. Fifth position is Kevin Brown. Sixth is J.D. Baumgardner. In seventh position, David Waters. Eighth position, Steve Brown. Ninth position, Alexis Molina. Tenth position, Bill Bailey. Eleventh position is Brian Taylor. So, looking down to the MX-5s now in the sports touring division. In first position we have Giancarlo Lenzi. Second is Eric Biggs. Third is Jarrett Lawson. Fourth is Antti Turunen. In fifth position, Hang Ho Tao. In sixth is Chris Moran. Seventh is Ryan Worley. Eighth is Joseph Peake. Ninth is uh, Jason Bryfogel. Uh, tenth position is Wes Irwick or Eric. And uh, then round out the grid is John Montoya and Peter Bresnan. Right, okay, so looking on to the qualification times now, uh, Eric, and sorry, um, Phil, we have some massive time differences between the GT1s and the GT1, well, I say massive, but not that massive. What, 1 minute 27 is the fastest of the Grand Sports, and uh, 1 minute 33 is the fastest of the Sports Touring, so that's, uh, Phil, that's going to be a, um, some good racing. Yeah, it, this is going to be better than uh, like a GT1 and GT2 split because of the massive time difference. So hopefully we shouldn't have any uh, problems with different classes racing here. Okay, so we are on the uh, the grid is forming up, and uh, with the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series, we do have some fantastic paint jobs as well. So there's going to be some uh, some nice cars to to watch when we go around. The circuit is um, the Road B. Uh, combination of Homestead Miami, which is the infield um, minus uh, corners nine, ten, eleven. Uh, so it just goes back onto the onto the oval for corners nine and ten. So there should be some quite good drafting uh, coming out of the hairpin in turn number eight, all the way to turn number one, which is uh, literally a flick of the wheel and then hold it to turn number two. Yeah, turn number one is actually going to be tricky because you, you come off the oval and then instantly have to slam on the brakes for a tight turn number two. It actually seems like it it tightens out pretty pretty bad there. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of balancing of the cars. And with these two types of cars, you really need to get the front end early, um, get the weight transferred, and then just sort of control the, uh, control the slide on the way out on some of these corners, especially we're looking at the S's of three, four, and five. Yeah, that's going to be a tricky section. Uh, I don't know exactly. I believe the MX-5s are probably going to be faster through there. Um, should be interesting to see. Yeah, certainly. Especially towards the back of the grid in the um, in the Grand Sports, uh, where Brian Taylor and we got the faster um, MX-5s, Janko Lindsay and Eric Biggs. And we're certainly going to see a lot of cars um, held up a lot of the MX-5s held up, and I remember that the, they did a race in uh, Daytona Road, and um, one of the, some of the faster uh, MX-5s, Grand, Grand uh, Sports Touring, did actually take an early pit stop because we. One of the rules stipulated by the um, Content and Sports Car Series is that there has to be a 15 uh, a pit stop in the first 15 minutes of the race. Well, that's uh, that's an interesting rule there. No, it is. It's, uh, big, it's very difficult to track because obviously the uh, the placings get out of sync quite early on. Yep, so the first 15 minutes, that's what we've got to look at and see uh, when people decide to rush into the pits to get their mandatory stop done. We just see uh, they're coming through corner number two and three now, uh, just 
following Trace McRae, the pole sitter. And that's, that is a really very, very tight section of corners there. Yeah, the corner you just came out of now, uh, turn five, running down here to turn six. It's just a, a long run down. You have to get this hairpin they're coming up to just right. It's also going to be a good passing zone here as well. Oh, that's excellent. We, uh, it was, yeah, turn six, quite a, quite a sharp one. That's going to take a lot of effort to get around that and get a smooth exit. Um, turn number seven looks a little bit faster, just to flick it through. And then there's another really long straight up until um, corner number eight. So this this is a roval, and um, it's going to present some excellent racing for us. Yeah, a good thing about this track is the long straights followed by the hairpin turns. I, it's not... It might not have the biggest amount of characteristics to it, but at least it's going to allow some uh, good passing and great racing. Right, so we're now joining on to the main oval again. Yeah, this is going to be a huge uh, drafting here. I don't know about the, the Mustangs, how well they draft, but I know the MX-5s are going to have huge, huge runs through the oval here. Okay, so the pace car has backed up the field. Trace McRae and Brian Stobbeck are looking quite fighty. We're just waiting for the pace car to go in and then we'll be underway at Homestead, Miami. So we're just coming to the end of turn number 10 now. So we're just waiting. The lights are out on the pace car. We're just waiting for them to dip in, which he's done now. And now the, the, the pack is lined up, and it's all down to Trace McRae to stick his foot down and take the green flag. 90 minutes racing at Homestead and Miami Speedway. Big bunch going into the first corner. It charged hard here in turn one. Two. Two, sorry. Right, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled to see if there's any contact. Oh, it looks okay yes, MX-5's in the back. Looks like uh, well, three or four cars got before they even got to turn two. Looked like they had contact. Okay, so there's already some early door rubbing there between the uh, between the sports touring division. And it looks like the early casualty is Hang Hotel, who uh, who car. It looks like he's taken a big impact in the back offside um, section. He's having some, a lot of trouble driving that car very straight. Yeah, he has uh, massive suspension damage right now. Car's not tracking straight at all. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the most severe crabbing I've seen. Out front and Trace McRae. We're going to see, I think we're going to see Trace stretch out into a bit of a lead here because certainly with, uh, with the pack further down they're going to be uh, getting quite quite close in the in the draft and they're going to look them in their mirrors a lot. So you seem to be quite stretched out the first ten drivers currently. All the way back to Giancarlo Lenzi who is the first of the sports tourers. Looks like they've got the um, orange and black stripes vehicle of Eric Biggs behind. Yeah, Eric has a good run here to the draft. Okay, so we have a three-way now between Eric Biggs, Jarrett Lawson and Jan Kyle Lindsay. Looks like they didn't get as close as we hoped they would do, but they're going to close up now for this Constantino effect on the S's of turns three, four and five. It's a rather clean start here, actually. Uh, everyone's single file right now, pretty much. All the Mustangs are... Uh, pretty well uh, divided. Not bad for the MX-5s either. Yeah, we can't really see uh, any any major action to go at the moment apart from obviously Hang Hotel having that uh, problem at the start of the race. So the first of the pitting is John Montoya, car number 15. 
who's just coming in the pits now. That's his mandatory pit stop. In fact, he's just exiting the pits. And we've had drama with uh, Brian Stobbeck, who is in second place. He's dropped down now to 10th yeah. position. Yeah, this is just... Uh, oh, actually, no. He was avoiding Trace going into turn two. And uh, he just ended up running wide. It was a good save, not spinning it all the way around in the, in the sand. But, uh, yeah, it just Trace looked like he messed up his braking there entering turn two. And okay. Brian just avoided it. Well, that was uh, good that there was no damage then. Brian Stobbeck is now in 10th. He is chasing down Alexis Molina as they come into the long straights before corner number six. You can see he's taking the outside line. So they try and judge each other's braking correctly and try and uh, get the car in nice and early. So he can hopefully capitalise on the exits into turn number seven. And here he goes. He shows himself the inside quite early on into corner number 8 which is the tightest corner of Homestead Miami Road B and you can see Alexis just twitch slightly just to sort of yield the position quite early on and Brian is now up into ninth position yeah that's gonna be a, another big passing spot getting a run out of turn 7 and then to turn 8 it's a pretty good track actually for passing Right, so the next one in Brian's sights is Steve Brown. I'm just looking through the qualification times, uh, Phil, and I can see that the, the top eight are really, well, actually second to, to eighth position, all, lap, all lapping in the low, uh, as we see a spin there from Steve Brown. And David Waters, we've got three cars off at turn number one. So look at David Water, Steve Brown and Brian Taylor, oh not Brian Taylor, sorry, Russell Cleason are off. That was a big accident, what happened there? I'm trying to spot it now, it looks like, uh, I don't know exactly what happened behind Russell. Russell looked like he just clipped the grass under braking, yeah that's exactly what he did. He clipped the grass under braking and just spun it wide. However, David Waters just, I don't know, he just spun it when getting back on the throttle, but he chose to lock the tires up and uh, Steve Brown just had nowhere to go. Right, okay, so I believe we we haven't got the caution flag out yet. Which is, uh, ooh, we just see uh, Russell Cleason is trying to pass a few, uh, few MX-5s now. So we have pass position here. Uh. Right, so Russell Cleason is now up into turn number nine. He's stretched away from those, uh, from that gaggle of the lead in the MX-5s. Just uh, seeing what's happened to Oscar Salin. I believe he's had a uh, he's dropped a couple of places. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what happened to him. He actually just passed back into third, but I don't know exactly what made him go off or lose position. Sorry. Oh, he okay, actually so turn two is uh, he struck again. Just ran wide and uh, got dropped back down into fourth. We're going to see a lot more action at turn two than, say, um, Daytona Road uh, first first corner. I think it seems to be catching quite a lot of people out, and there's a nice little uh, patch of gravel as well that sort of slows people down and gives them a bit of a problem about trying to get back out again. It's not just a case of a tarmac runoff, so we, we want to see a lot of places drop there. Oh, actually, uh, who's in second? J J.D. Baumgartner? I'm sorry, uh, he just went off 
entering turn two again. So, quite prolific then as uh, Trace McRae s stretches the lead out now. Obviously, Jay had the, uh, the problem he's been followed by. In fact, his JD's had to drop right down the grid as we've got Oscar Salin now. He's back up in the second position, followed closely by Kevin Brown in that uh, monster um, Mustang. Eric Biggs here is uh, defending, trying to keep the uh, ST lead right now. Not sure actually how he got into the lead, but he's battling pretty hard to keep it right now. Okay, so the three-way battle now between Giancarlo, Eric, and Jarrett Lawson. It looks like there's a lot of towing going on there with, with uh, Jarrett Maywell stick his nose outside of Giancarlo. Oh, a little tap. A little tap run into number six. Corner number six there. That's not going to do uh, either of them the whole world of good. No da damage. They didn't run a little bit wide. They didn't run off the, uh, off the circuit either. So it looks like they've got away with that one. Yeah, these cars are pretty durable, but hopefully it doesn't get some form of aero damage that hurts them on the oval. Well, we saw in the race earlier on, as we can just see Giancarlo, just get up the inside of Eric Biggs there and try to get a better run on. We certainly saw earlier in the TFR Super Cup race that um, a lot of the slow breaking in the slower corners cause a lot of trouble with these guys. And I think we're going to see that again now, because we've got some, as you, as you alluded to earlier, we've got some proper stopping, proper... Um, fast sections into really slow sections, especially with uh, corner number six and corner number eight. So we're going to see a lot of people try and sort of outbreak each other and, and lose breaking points. Yeah, we actually have, uh, who's currently second. I don't want to butcher his name up at all, <laughs> but uh, currently pitting. There's actually a mandatory, mandatory pit rule try to pull that up for you real quick here. So that was the car of Giancarlo Lenzi now, he just got himself out of that three-way fight. Just stuck him, stuck himself in the pits, that's his 15 minutes out of the way. We'll see where it comes out in the race order. Yeah, it seems the, uh, the ST class has to pit at least by lap 17, and the Grand Sport class has to pit at least by lap 18. So it plays a plays a decent role here. And what strategy you want to use, either pitting early or pitting late. And it's certainly good to get a lot of clean a lot of clean air sometimes if you want to pit in when you think you're gonna have when you're getting slowed down by other cars, or you're in a three way fight, you know, just come into the pits, come out in a bit of air and try and get some uh, get some clean fast laps in. Yeah, Gian Giancarlo uh he qualified on pole and he, he qualified on pole by a pretty hefty margin so he should be able to put some laps down by himself that will able that will be able to uh, propel him into the lead just hopefully his car is not too heavy by uh, putting more fuel into the car yeah we can see um, still that uh, Hang Ho Tao is still in the pits actually he's only completed one lap he's still in the pits getting that, getting that uh, damage fixed Okay, so currently the first five positions in each class in the Grand Sports class. Trez McRae is in first position. Oscar Salin is second. Kevin Brown is in third. Brian Subbet is in fourth position. And Alexis Molina is in fifth position in the Sports Touring category. Eric Biggs is in first. Jarrett Lawson second. Chris Brown third. Ryan Wally fourth. And Wes Eric fifth. Obviously these positions are sort of jumbled up with the old uh, mandatory pit stop. But we've got about ten laps to do before the pit window comes to the close. Uh, David Waters here actually just had a pretty big off entering turn eight. Oh, he actually got into someone, sorry. So, David Waters then in the Mustang is all the way down in ninth position now. He clipped uh, Russell Classen entering turn eight. Russell just kind of spun to the inside a little bit and saved it. However, David was spun back to the outside and was pretty much on the oval. Uh, turn two of the NASCAR oval, I guess you'd call it. So this is the second time then that these two guys have um, fallen off the circuit. Obviously they didn't touch the first time, but this one sounds like it's uh, a little bit more of a um, contact related incident. Yes.
Okay, Antti Turman in the Sports Turin has completed his mandatory pit stop. He has come back out in 17th position. I believe we're watching uh, J.D. Baumgartner's uh, Mustang, which is in a black livery. He's just coming out to join the... Oh, no, sorry, we're on 14 of Kevin Brown. He's just coming around to lap one of the uh, MX-5s. And he's chasing down Brian Stobek, who's in full position. Oh, no, sorry, he's just... He must have swapped positions. Yeah, Brian had just got around in that lap. Brian's actually uh, putting down some quick times right now. It'd be interesting to see if he's maybe running a little less fuel than the people in front of him. Okay, as he's now coming on to the straight pass turn number, four, turn number five. And it's just stretched out a little bit between Oscar Brian and Kevin Brown. We're now in the roll car cam of Jarrett Lawson as he dies in the pit lane. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, pit entry, actually, because you have to run on the... It's like an access road along the inside of the oval. I and mean, thankfully these cars aren't too fast, so it's easy to keep it steady, but on a faster car there, that could be uh, big trouble. Yeah, you don't want to get a, uh, a wheel on the outside and s slip up and just come across the, uh, the oval again. First retirement of the day is Hang Tao, who had that big, big um, damage early in the race, he's called it a day. Chris Moran also, who was running fourth, I believe, in the ST classes pit. Yeah, the number 19 car, as we see Jarrett Lawson's exit in the pits now. As you can pit. see, uh, Giancarlo is actually coming past him right now. So him pitting a little bit earlier has actually helped him. Oh, and actually a car right in front of Giancarlo just ran off the course here. Alexis Molina. <laughs> Turn number two claims another victim for the Mustangs. We are on board with Giancarlo Lenzi, car number two. Big stop, quite a late apex on that corner. Just gets in, rides the curb, gets a bit of oversteer, puts his foot down. Little kink now in corner number seven, big long straight, he doesn't let it run too wide. He's got to keep his uh, eyes in the mirror at all times because uh, he's just been passed by J.D. Barngardner in the Mustang. Okay, so we are now 10 laps in, or sorry, 11 laps in. We've got about another 7 8 laps before the pit window shut. At the moment, um, Trace McRae, still in the lead, has lapped every car all the way up to Wes Ewick in hit 12th position. Eric Biggs actually just pit, and he came out right behind Giancarlo, and Gian uh, Giancarlo but ahead of Jarrett Lawson. So Giancarlo is the winner here uh, after pit stops for sure. Okay, so the top three of, uh, oh, sorry, not the top three, um, Giancarlo, Jarrett, and Eric Biggs have established their um, their fight now. We'll just hopefully these, these guys can get quite close to each other. We can see some place swapping happening. In the sports they're in 20, 21 car of Wes Ewick and the 46 car of Peter Brennan haven't pitted yet.
and there's only one Mustang, one Mustang driver has been in the pit so far, so we should be seeing a lot of uh, a lot of the Mustangs coming in soon. Okay, so we're riding on board. Brian Stobbett now in second position, 2.8 seconds behind Trace McRae. He's actually the uh, the fastest uh, Grand Sport Mustang on track right now. Ooh, as he yeah. had a close moment there with uh, John Montoya. Oh, actually, wait a minute. He's slowing down. Brian is. I'm not quite sure why. Wait, did he just let someone pass? Did he just let Oscar pass? Yeah, I don't. I don't know why he had to slow down there. Well, that's that means he's immediately under pressure now from Kevin Brown. As they weave past another Mustang, another MX-5, sorry. So there's a good little three-way uh, now between developing between Oscar, Brian and Kevin Brown. As you see, uh, Brian just got a little bit on the grass, coming out of that corner. So it looks like he will now will be in the draft of Kevin Brown. And, and you know what, Phil? I expected more draft in here. I expected to be able to properly uh, tow them back in and uh, give everyone a sort of... Uh, give drivers a, a really competitive edge to, to, to get inside people. But it's just... Um, it's not happening at the minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of uh, amazed by that. The, the MX-5 seemed to uh, draft up, you know, to the other MX-5s much, much better than the Mustangs, which just seems weird since you know you think the faster car uh, of the Mustang would you know have more suck up basically to the car ahead okay so following number 19 now of Chris Moran screaming into turn number two he's chasing down uh, Jason Bryce Rogel this is the battle for 15th position. Yeah, I believe this is 6th uh, in class. So Jason went a little bit long here into, um, into corner number 6. Hasn't really uh, slowed him down any, 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 any real amount, as you see uh, Chris Brown take a much smoother line into turn number seven to maximise his speed. But you see him close massively there. Just had a little lock up mid apex. It's really going to affect the. Uh, well, you would have thought it would be affecting his exit speed, but he seems to be uh, quite close now to Jason. Yeah, we'll see here. He'll actually, you know, get with him probably one to maybe two car lengths before breaking for turn one and two here. Let's see the... maybe even closer than that, but I, I just don't understand why the Mustangs aren't very similar. Okay now, so is he going to just uh, stick his nose on the inside of turn number one, which he is, he's alongside now. Jason yields, breaks to let him pass. Didn't really need to break the honest, if he just let off, then no. uh, he's wide. Chris makes a mistake here. So that was big then. He had a lot of speed, just didn't lock up his brakes enough, just couldn't slow the car down, shot off wide and got caught by the gravel trap. Yeah, that, that corner is just, uh, it's very deceiving. You think you can take it much, much faster than you can. And when you think you're slow enough to actually make it, it you just realize you're not last second. And there's nothing you can really do but just hope that you don't spin as soon as you hit the grass. Yeah, it's good that there's also uh, no sort of wall in there, I suppose. We've not really seen, aside from the incidents in the uh, the first couple of laps, we've not really seen much door-to-door uh, -door action. Especially considering at the start how close some of these cars were to each other. Yeah, it's spread out quite nicely, but at the same time, I mean, 
there's some cars close, thankfully. And they're trying to make something happen. Like, once again, Chris is trying to pass Jason. Yeah, it looks like he's taking a little different tact. His long side now is going to go up high as we come around the banking. And uh, I guess the last one was pretty much addressed to her, so this is a real deal now. He's just going to lose a little bit of speed now, a little bit of uh, space on Jason as he comes down from the banking. And he's uh, going to come up to the scene of last lapse crime. That was quite interesting. Right? He he could have dropped back a little on the oval and then got a, a better run going for the turn one here. And so he just elected to stay on the outside of him. He goes Ooh, wide. That's a mistake two. there. Yeah. He goes wide in the three. It's a shame because I mean once once Jason was past him, we didn't even think about coming back into the tow. As we see the car behind, the MX-5, or the Mustang, sorry, of J.D. Bongard. Now, just get a little bit of a slide on and do a half spin. And that's capitalised immediately by David Waters, who's up alongside as they go down the long straight to turn number six. The Mustangs are starting to come into the pits now as well. Also, just an update on the uh, ST class here. It looks like... Uh, Jarrett Lawson has got in front of Eric, Eric Biggs. However, Eric has a very, very good run coming onto the oval here. So we've got three battles now between uh, Jarrett, Jarrett Lawson and Eric Biggs. We've also got one between Chris Moran and Jason Byfogel. And then up in the... So we've seen J.D. Bongard they dropped down a couple of positions. I think there's some stuff that's gone on in the middle of the pack. Cameras now on Eric Biggs chasing the uh, chasing the blue MX-5 Jarrett Lawson. We can just see a little bit of a different line where Eric keeps it just a little bit more tight to get a good on exit speed. He flicks the car around for corner number four. We can see Jarrett just ran just a little bit wide. Had to recorrect himself in the inside of the corner. So it's the Oakley liveried MX-5 up against the Ragu liveried MX-5. So come round turn number eight now to join the oval circuit. We can see that they're up behind um, John Montoy now, who is currently sat in in a tenth position in class. So I'm going to use his tag a little bit as we see Jarrett Lawson just do a quick blink. There's obviously kind of a little bit of a network issue. So Phil, do you think he's, he's related to um, to uh, JP Montoya? No, I don't. I don't think he's related to Juan Montoya. It, it's a pretty interesting uh, similarity in names, though. When you say it, it, just, a, um, it rolls out very similar. Should we get a uh, a jet dryer on track? <coughs> well, it matters how long you want this broadcast to be. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so I believe Trace McRae has been and gone in the pits. There's only Kevin Brown, I think. He's the only person that needs to come in the pits. And I believe we're also waiting for Russell Cleason and the 21 car. And Phil, is um, is where, where's Airwick? Is he actually pitted? Did you say Eric? Sorry. 
Yeah, Wes, the uh, the class leader in uh, MX fives in the sport tour. I don't think he's pitted. This must be he must be pitting in the next. Uh, couple he of laps. Must, I believe he's actually has he's pitting actually right now. Aha. Uh -huh. In pit road currently. Crisis salt. That means that Giancarlo Lenzi has retaken the lead. Jarrett Lawson is in second position. Eric Biggs in third. Currently, Wes is down in fourth, but obviously he will be caught now by Chris Moran, who's. Uh, driving up near the pit lane. Russell Cleason now is in the pit lane. There's actually a rule for this uh, mandatory pit stop. Your pit stop has to be at least 10 seconds long, and that's just to ensure that you have uh, added fuel. Right. Okay. So, what kind? Of, how do you think the uh, the guys will be doing their strategy now? They've obviously got a. Um, they've obviously they would have pitted light to start off with. Just got through the 15 minutes. Now they chuck some more fuel in. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because. And it just, uh, I, I don't really know how long these cars take to fill up because if you were just, if you put a lot of fuel in at the beginning, even though you're not driving as far as maybe how much your fuel can hold, you have a much uh, slower pit stop. So if you can get your pit stop as close to 10 seconds as possible, then it would help greatly. However, I think... A, a, few cars might have actually did a pit stop under 10 seconds. Okay, so now we are 34 minutes in of a 90 minute race and uh, we should start to see the order sort itself out, actually sort itself out in the sports touring category where we have Jack Lindsay first, Janet Rawson second, Eric Biggs third, Jason Bryford fourth, Jason Peake fifth, Chris Moran sixth, Wes Erwick in 7th, Anthony Turin in 8th, uh, Ryan Wally 9th, and John Montoya in 10th. Peter Bresnan is in 11th position currently. Following the Chris Moran MX-5, who has been harassed by, who is harassing Joseph Peake in the, uh, in the Plum Street Hall. Yeah, uh, Chris Moran actually went off a couple laps to go in turn 8 that they're going through right now and lost two positions. He was actually ahead of Jason Breifogel, who's right in front of both of those cars. So he will now be uh, trying to reclaim those positions, chasing down, chasing down Joseph. Okay, we are now 20 laps in for the MX-5s. They are... Oh, as we see the red MX-5 of Chris Moran go very long into corner number two. Corner number two has claimed another victim. That means he drops further back from the pack he was chasing of Joseph, Jason and John Montoya. And now he's just got to concentrate about getting steady again, making sure that he doesn't make any further mistakes. And we're going to use this opportunity to welcome one of our Finnish directors, Johnny Backman, into the studio. Welcome, Johnny. Hi, man. Glad to be with you. How are you finding Homestead Day? 
I actually love Homestead in ev every form of uh, racing. I love uh, Impalas here, I love the IndyCars here. That's a surprise because I usually hate all IndyCar ovals. I, I like this car, uh, track with the trucks. I like the. I've, uh, I haven't raced MX5s or, nor Mustangs here, but uh, I've done the road course with the uh, Corvettes and the Ford GTs. And uh, even though the track is uh, a, a bit. Uh, Skinny or <laughs> thin in the in the middle course. I still uh, I still go, love going around these. And uh, I I expected a lot more sort of door banging really, but we've not we've only seen individual mistakes so far. Everyone's sort of been quite reserved. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised, especially when uh, we we uh, compare this uh, to the season opener and uh, the barber we had uh, <coughs> we broadcasted last week. Uh, this has had a very few incidents compared to that. I mean, we had lots of spins uh, in the barber hairpin and lots of guys going off track, sliding, and all, all sorts of stuff. But this race seems to be uh, a little bit too clean, as I should say. I, I what I would expect, especially with the um, on the oval section, that I would have expected MX5 especially to have a uh, much more uh, drafting going on. Yeah, we've not really seen um, that much yet, and uh, we've not also seen any safety cars out either. And uh, as a safety car aficionado, um, I think Phil, well, obviously, we do. You're, you're a chap who lives stateside, so uh, you're more attuned to safety cars and sort of double file, uh, double file restarts than myself. Oh uh, yes, uh, I, I, I'm not a huge fan on the double file restarts. The safety cars, that that's fine with me. As we have a battle uh, here with uh, Joseph. Peak and uh, Jason Bryfogel, but uh, just the double fall restarts just seem to promote a uh, little bit too aggressive racing, in my opinion. Yeah, and we see um, Joseph just sort of drop back in. Uh, so he's just done a switch, and there's another MX-5 in the way that's probably going to want to get out of the way quite quick. So that really stopped Joseph from uh, capitalising on that opportunity. So I quite like the. Um, I quite like the double fire restarts in this because it just sort of backs everyone up again. It means that the field doesn't get too stretched out. It's, it's a welcome change to see every so often in, uh, in road racing. Yeah, it, it just matters who's driving if, or how far it is into the race. If it's far into the race, people might you know, just get too aggressive and you'll see a huge pile up entering turn one or something like that. Uh, and I don't know, single file restarts could be the exact same way. But double file just seems like everyone's more compact, and that's just what's going to happen, most likely. Okay, so we're looking at Jarrett and Eric Biggs now. Or we're not, but they're further up ahead of the field. They look to be um, one of the closest fights on the circuit at the minute, and that's the fight for second position in the sports touring category. Yeah, and just to uh, just to jump in, uh, I uh, heard Phil Diaz uh, mention that uh, some a few people went uh, below 10 seconds in the uh, required 10 seconds of pit stop, and I actually took a deep uh, good look at it. And um, the current leader, 84 car of Oscar Oscar Salin, uh, did a 9.6 seconds. Then the uh, MX5 leader Giancarlo Lindsay did 9.3 seconds. Jason Breifogel 8.9 seconds, and this, the fastest pit stop. Number 21, Wes Eric, uh, 8.6 seconds. So I'm not sure uh, how um, how ni uh, nitpicking uh, <laughs> it goes on with the with the amount of pit stops or the uh, pit stop duration. But uh, those four guys uh, really um, really went below the 10 seconds. Okay, so we've got some identical battles going on uh, in the field now between uh, Jason and Joseph, Jason Barfogel and Joseph for the fourth position and we also got one just ahead with Eric and Jarrett so it's quite difficult which one to focus on because they are getting quite close at times but they're not really getting close enough to challenge yeah we might see actually a battle uh, for the lead in the next probably three or four laps between Oscar and Trace uh, Trace has been pulling in at least a half a second each lap and we've seen this. We've seen this uh, previously with Trace. He's a very, very quick driver. One, certainly one of the the more um, senior of the MX uh, or the of the Mustang drivers in uh, the official I racing series. Yeah, Brian also is not too far behind. He's only three seconds behind Trace, and he's been running very similar lap times, at least when not in traffic. 
and on the back straight now of Homestead, Jason Bryfogel is alongside um, Joseph Peake. And, well, he was, but then obviously the high line sort of tucked him back in. And we've seen this a few times, Phil, where the guy goes high, he gets, uh, he loses ground, but he doesn't immediately switch back in. But now we see him obviously switch to the inside of the circle. Now just braked, because obviously there's a Mustang just shooting past both of them. Yeah, so that's, that's actually the, the leader. Yeah, there was a leader after there, just decided to, uh, not break up the fight, but just <laughs> trying to gain as much time as possible, because... And he just passed three MX-5s right there, and now uh, Trace has to pass those three MX-5s in the infield, which is much harder to do. So there is now a visible gap between the first two of the Mustang drivers. There's three MX-5s separating them all. And we'll just see how much uh, time it takes Trace to sort of cut through these through these guys. Yeah, Brian actually gained about seven tenths that last lap on Trace. I I'm guessing because of traffic, and Brian's going to have a little bit easier time here in traffic, uh, passing two of the MX-5s on the oval. As you see, uh, Trace uh, just slide out of corner number eight behind uh, Jason. He he's just going to high, take the high line now, just to make sure he gets past um, Joseph Peake, which he is, and there's also. Brian is gaining rapidly on the guys, so he'll be on the uh, on the start finish straight. He'll be able to get in front of Joseph in the first corner. Yeah, that battle in the MX-5 is also about to happen here. I thought they might be doing some bump drafting for a minute. So it's a very interesting line that Jason's taken straight to the wall, out wide, to make the sweep into the uh, first corner, and then see how he handles the breaking of the second corner. Yeah, that, that would seem much easier on a faster car, but these cars are relatively slower compared to, uh, let's say, the higher up classes that race here, like Daytona prototypes and other type of GT cars. So they have to take that wider line, and it helps them much more to straight line break it. The MX-5s, I guess, could help if in traffic and stuff like that as well. Okay, so we are now halfway through the Content Engineering Sports Car Series in Homestead, Miami using the Road B configuration. My name is Rob Sutherland and we're joined with which we, sorry, we're joined by Phil Diaz for today. The positions currently at the top five of the Mustang or the group sports category. Oscar Salin is in first position, Trace McCray second, Brian Stockback third, Kevin Brown fourth and Jay Von Gardner in fifth in the sports touring category. We have Giancarlo Lenzi in first position, Eric Biggs in second position, Jarrett Lawson in third position, Joseph Peake in fourth position, and Jason Bryfogel in fifth position. But I will warn you, second and fourth will be changing every lap, it appears, because we do have fights on the circuit between Eric Biggs and Jarrett Lawson and Joseph Peake and Jason Bryfogel. Okay, so the gap between the first two is now down to 2.9 seconds and Brian Stobbeck is a further 4.6 seconds down the road from the leader. As we see oh. contact between Joseph Peake and Jason Bryfogel in the second corner. Yeah, I was just about to comment on that actually. Well, Looked like uh, Joseph just ran a little wide and then kind of pinched the exit there so Jason couldn't get a run on him. So we have seen some uh, some door contact at last between some of these drivers. Looks like Eric Biggs has, I think he may have lost second position as well, so we'll see what happened there. Yeah, yeah he actually, uh, he ran wide in turn two. I don't know if you just saw that or not. Yeah, I saw it exactly the same time you saw that. I don't know if we can, uh, if we can bring a replay back. Ah, we can't. But however, Eric Biggs is now in the draft in Jarrett Lawson into corners 9 and 10. So he drops to the inside.
Trace yes. McRae is now 2.187 seconds behind. Um, the leader, Oscar Salin. And he's also just caught up the battle between Jarrett and Eric Bix. Yeah, Trace is definitely on a mission right now trying to catch up to Oscar. Whoa! That shows it right there. Uh, oh, contact. Well, contact. Eric Biggs is the winner out of this one, actually, passing uh, Jarrett Lawson there. So that was all set up, and they all caught up one of the bat markers, Paul Brennan. They went three wide, and um, it looked to me like Jarrett turned in on Trace, to be honest. It looked like he could have given him a little bit more room. Yeah, it looks like the MX-5 is actually corner a bit faster. So I guess he tried to just keep his momentum up on the outside, not knowing that the Mustang is going to be a little bit slower on the inside. Yeah, and those Mustangs will um, slide quite wide as well because they are, they are quite heavy. Yeah, just visual size difference kind of shows that they're going to be uh, quite a bit more heavy than the MX-5s. Got some proper American iron out on the, on the circuit today. <laughs> Following Jason Bryfogel now in his uh, quest to catch up Joseph Peak again. Seems like this battle's been going on for laps and laps and laps. We're on lap number 27 at the minute, over halfway through. So you flip, flip through turn number one in turn number two. We see the Mustang in front, Brian Taylor, go very wide. Yeah, that, that corner, it just shows how challenging that corner really is. That's a magnet, isn't it? An absolute magnet. Yeah, I personally <laughs> highly dislike that corner because I'm one of those people that run wide in it. And uh, just had a quick look through, Alexis Molina has also just run very long in that corner, losing a position to Russell Cleeton. So that's uh, Alexis has lost six position now. Okay, so Jason's just taking a little look on the outside of Brian of uh, Joseph Peake's vehicle as they come down into corner number eight. Look at the squirm under braking there. We didn't lock the tyres up. Quite a late apex here. She's got to get a lot of. Uh, well, yeah, it's quite a late apex. Yeah, you didn't get a lot of speed out of that. Uh, just looking at the gaps for the uh, leaders in Grand Sport right now, Trace actually gained about 1.1 seconds that last lap on Oscar. He's uh, definitely directly in front of him now. Uh, maybe just being able to see him helps him run better lap times. can always be a big mental game. He is absolutely on a mission, Trace McRae. So I think this uh, this is gonna we're gonna see a fight in about a couple of laps time I think between these two guys. Yeah, and the person in third, Brian, he would absolutely love to see uh, them battle it out right now because then he'd be thrown right into the mix because he can th he can he's running very very similar times to Trace. Oh, big big slide out by Trace out of corner number eight. So just to show how fast these guys are running, Trace McRae's last lap was 128.3, Brian Stobex was 128.4, and Oscar's was 129.4. Could also be that uh, Oscar might have pit a little bit earlier than Trace, and his tire is just uh, a little bit more worn out. The Mustang seems to it can wear tires out pretty decently, actually, and you know, slow you down maybe a little bit. Well, he's been lapping in 129s since uh, lap number 25s on lap number 20, uh, lap number 31 now. So, yeah, it looks like Oscar's pushing pretty hard right now. He's sliding around most of the corners here. You can tell he's he's pushing as hard as he can to stay in front of Trace. And you can obviously you can see Trace is just nice and smooth throughout the corners, apart from corner number eight in the last lap.
So it looks like the win at the moment in this is Brian Stobek, who just caught them by 0.8 seconds in that last lap. So he's getting closer and closer and closer. So we could be seeing an excellent three-way fight for the lead soon. Oh, that'd be a that'd be a good end to this race. And we can see that Lawson is in the pits. Let me just find out why Lawson, Mr. Jarrett Lawson, is in the pits. Just looks like Jarrett had a bit of a splash and dash. Yeah, I might have just miscalculated fuel there. And he was joined by. Brian Taylor, I believe. So Trace is now past Oscar in the combination three, four and five corners. Yeah, just came up alongside. In fact, Oscar run wide, going into corner number two. Uh, he had a little bit of a twitch and uh, narrowly avoided Trace coming back onto the circuit. Trace then got the inside line in corner number three and then from corner number four start to extend this lead away. So we're just see, seeing how much that's cost Oscar in terms of time now. Back on to uh, Brian Stevick. He posted a 1 minute 28.5 in his last lap. So we have a change for the lead, Phil. Yeah, this is, uh, this is more early than I was hoping for. <laughs> I was hoping Brian could catch Trey at the same time Trace caught Oscar. Would have made a very, very entertaining here. Hopefully Trey yeah. doesn't get too big of a lead here and Brian can maybe chase him down. And it was all down to a mistake as well. A bit of pressure in the first corner. Yeah, Oscar, you can tell, is just, he's, he's driving on the absolute limit right now trying to stay up. Uh, he's doing a good job of doing it. Just one little mistake can cost you a position when running this close. Stop it, just clips the curb in the start of call number two. He is now one point, he is about half a second away from Oscar. Oscar is half a second back from Trace. And maybe this is one of those uh, opportunities where Oscar, because obviously Oscar's been driving out in the lead uh, for pretty much a lot of this race so far, he can now finally get to look on another car and just sort of start to lap fast times and keep quite close and just see if that improves his time a little bit. Sometimes if you just hot lap and it can get a bit get a bit boring you can in you, your concentration can wonder. Exactly. When when chasing somebody it's uh it just seems much, much easier than when leading and and definitely when leading and if like you seem like you're getting caught every single lap. Whether it's your actual pace or not, it can just be uh it can just really mess up your your mental strategy. Okay, so we're following the thirty three of Ryan Wally now and where's Eric? And they are all the way down in 16th position, which is in position or 6th position on class. He's just inside now, coming the start-finish straight. Flicks into corner number one, side by side. Who's going to give way first? Looks like Wes gave way first. As there's a Mustang joining the fight, David Waters. Uh, David looks like he's just going to wait until there's a much easier place to pass. He doesn't want to mess with this battle right now. David had that incident earlier and fell two laps down to the uh, leaders in the Mustang class. So David uh, just gets past one of them now, goes in quite early. This is obviously the situation where Jarrett and uh, Trace touched earlier as well, so he doesn't try and get too close to the Mustang. And the uh, eternal struggle between Jason Bryfogel and uh, Chris Moran is still going on. Yeah, they're not going to give up on each other. I don't think they've been more than one second apart the entire race, have they? Oh no, sorry, no. my bad. That's Joseph Peake and Joseph uh, and uh, Jason Bryfogel there. I've got them completely mixed up. You know, it's actually funny is uh, 
I think we might have been right. When Oscar got behind Trace, it seems like his times have already increased by a good half a second. Even though Trace is flying away currently. That's amazing how you can just let standard slip when you start to look at one breaking spot and then think, oh no, I'll, I'll go a little bit earlier or something like that. And you and you start to lose lose the concentration and the, and the repetitive action you need to, to get round in the low 20, 128s. So we are now on. We're now 58 minutes in, and the top five on top five on Grand Sports in first position: Trace McRae, second position: Oscar Salin, third position: Brian Strobik, fourth is Kevin Brown, fifth JD Baumgartner in the Sports Touring category. Giancarlo Lenzi, third position: Eric Biggs is in second, Joseph Peets in third, Jesse Byfogle's fourth, Chris Moran is in fifth. You are watching the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series on Glacier TV. My name is Rob Sutherland and my colleague next to me is Phil Diaz. Just watching Jason Byfogle still. Comes into corners number three, four, and five. As uh, Chris Moran, right behind them, probably about three seconds back, just went into the grass there. Easy save for him, but it looked like he might have been chasing them down a little bit before that. That same corner. Yep, looking at Chris Moran's uh, last few laps, 135.9, one of 36.5, and a 137.1. Compared to uh, 135.8, 135.8, and 136.6, so Jason and Joseph are lapping very consistently. Further up the front of the grid as well, um, Brian's topic's not actually caught up with uh, Oscar as much as we thought he would do. We thought he'd be. Uh, done and dusted by now, showing the pace, but Oscar's picked up his pace again, and uh, the first three are quite spread out, obviously Trace is driving off into the sunset now. Look like Trace actually had a, uh, well Trace and Oscar both lapped in the 29.6 range last lap, while Brian lapped at 28.7, and it actually just sounded like someone blew their engine. I'm not sure, but I swear I just heard that. Okay, so let's have a little look. We can see David Waters coming into the pits. Oh, it was uh, Steve Brown just now blew his engine. He had some uh, front-end damage. So that might have uh, triggered that, obviously. Okay, so the leaders are now catching the fight between Jason and Joseph Peake. Well, they will be in the next couple of laps as they come down to call number six, Joseph and Jason. And and Phil, um, from what we can work out, the gap, the, how far back do you need to be before you uh, start to get the toe on this over? Uh Normally it would be around one second, but I think with these cars they're a little bit slower than uh, some of the faster cars, so probably closer to eight-tenths of a second, you know, three-quarters, eight-tenths of a second, somewhere in there. Okay, so we've not really, not really seen as dramatic towing as, as I thought we would have, to be honest with you. As we see, uh, Antti Turin uh, tries to pass Wesiwick in call number eight. In, sorry, in corner number eight, and uh, just had to lock up, take the forward in action, and he's uh, dropped off the pace now as he's back onto the the oval. That actually didn't hurt his uh, his exit speed hardly at all. He's actually well into the slipstream here for uh, turn one and two. Okay, so we can see how close he gets now before the start finish straight. Well, that uh, must uh, that Mustang with the monster livery just passed him up high. Chris Moran's actually in the pit cu pits currently, so I'm guessing he needs splash and dash for, f for fuel. 
Yeah, and he's now lost uh, two positions. He's back down to back down to eighth position. We can see uh, Anti taking um, a quite a straight line in the uh, in, in the S's as well, just behind uh, just behind Wes. Still can't get quite close enough. He's driving away now on uh, on the straight, coming up to corner number six. Yeah, I believe Andy feels like he's uh, a little bit quicker than Wes, and he just wants to get around him as fast as possible. Okay, he's going to have maybe an opportunity coming up into corner number eight now. Yeah, Brian's within that, uh, going back to uh, Grand Sport here. Actually, Brian's going to be on the inside of Oscar going into turn one and two. This could get uh, a little hairy. So in the last 30 minutes of the race now, we have a battle for second position going hot into corner number one, down into the low-geared corner number two. To see uh, Brian just still maintain the, the grip levels behind Oscar. As Oscar slides out of corner number three. Yeah, Brian doesn't want to push the issue right now. Uh, he might think that uh, Trace might be a little bit too far away to catch, so he just wants to take his time with Oscar and not, not push anything. It depends what's going on the, uh, in the mind of Brian at the moment, if he's just uh, determined to get past or if he's just trying to wait for Oscar to make a mistake, as he just did then, just wobbling coming out of uh, call number seven. And he's up close now on the inside. They're going to drift out of corner number eight as they join. That was fantastic. That was fantastic sort of uh, synchronised drift in there as they join the oval again. That's a drag race now. Side by side. And uh, looks like that position is now safe for Brian. We'll just see how or if he can get away from uh, Oscar. He's currently 4.1 seconds behind the leader, Trace McRae. Yeah, Oscar didn't put up too much of a fight here. So I think uh, he's just going to let Brian go, knowing that he's, a, he's faster. Sometimes when someone's just faster than you, you can't, you just know you can't try to race them because either you're going to make a mistake or well actually most of the time you're the one that's going to make the mistake <laughs> yeah no in, in my case I certainly am the one that makes the mistakes <clears throat> just trying to scour through the fields if we can see some other fights Just working out what's happened to Brian Taylor, the 68 Mustangs. He's dropped down to 10th position, and uh, it looks like Giancarlo Lindsay, the leader of the um, the MX-5, the Sport Touring. We've not actually talked about him it, it, a lot recently. Um, he's now up into ninth. So just wonder if Brian's had a, a an accident or something. I'm I'm not quite sure. His car looks pretty clean. And he's directly behind uh, Giancarlo. I know he had to do an extra pit stop for fuel. He might have just lost the time then. Well, he's also lapping the uh, 33, 32, 35, 32, 33. So, yeah, he must have just had that pit stop. And he's just trying to work his way back through the field again. And we're watching Anti, who's caught back up with uh, Wes, and he's uh, attempting to line up another move. Just coming back onto corner number nine, onto the uh, start of the banking. It's close enough for a drag yet. Um, we've worked out through telemetry. Our um, our finish stretch has worked out that you can gain about 10 mile an hour um, using the tow. Useful coming through corner number one.
And that's the second time I've seen Anthony do that. He doesn't mind riding the kerb on that second corner just to try and unstable the car so he can get the, get the nose around, get the rotation going. Yeah, uh, the MX-5 is, in my opinion, generally understeery, so I mean, you have to use the curbs to really help turn that car. Just to off-amber it a little bit, just to help the car rotate through the center of the corner. Yeah, you must be fa fairly confident driver to do that as well. Um, obviously, you are using a bit of a tiny little bit of trail braking and stuff to get the get the back moving out as well, just to move the transition from understeer to oversteer. Oh, yeah, you, you definitely have to have faith in yourself when you do it, because it's not always easy. I mean, some tracks you can have curbs that are much higher than these, and it'll just uh, throw your car into a spin just before you can even react. That was a lovely exit there from Anthony. And talking about having faith, uh, the Mustang of Russell Cleason has just caught this little battle now. And we can see that instantly Anthony, Anthony goes up into the draft um, of Russell. And he's now wide. I think he's just done a slingshot, hasn't he? Yeah, he's... I don't know if he was trying to... Uh, hoping to get a bigger draft from the Mustang. But he has a good run on West now. Hopefully he'll try something here in turn one. So all the old tricks and the coming out now from Ante as he's just gone in the inside. I think he might try and force the issue now. Coming into corner number one. Just had to duck in behind him, but he's right Ooh. up him now. And oh, in he's he just hops the curbs again. That turns in, but he's now dropped off dramatically now from Wes. Yeah, it looked like he uh, just straight line the braking too much there on the inside and just hopped over the curb. Yeah, just to comment quickly on the um, hopping the curb thing with the MX-5s. Uh, this is the uh, MX-5 Copper version and uh, we also have the MX-5 Roadster version and uh, as I've, uh, I've raced plenty, uh, quite a mu much with the, uh, with the different Mazdas and Roadster has, seems to be um, handling over the curves much more uh, uh, rookie friendly should I say uh, or when riding over the curves which is the, exactly as Phil mentioned the way to uh, drive around the, drive this car fast I mean you cannot you have to force the car to turn in uh, it, do, it simply refuses to turn properly with, uh, without the curbs and the, the cup car is actually so much softer than the Roadster that it's actually uh, it can get uh, over aggressive over the curbs and the car can go with two wheels so you really have to watch out in, uh, especially with the uh, steep curbs Anti once again has a pretty big run on West here, he's a little closer than normal but he goes high on the oval I and it's, it's yeah. too high, isn't it? Yeah, he, he's, he's scrubbing his speed off there. Only time you go high, really, is if you have a, a big enough run that when you go high and then you swoop down low coming off the corner, you'll just, you know, you'll just carry your momentum. And going high like that, as high as he's going, is just... And cars these slow, it's, it's not helping him carry his momentum like he wants to. I see him ducking the inside now off to corner number three, and that was interesting. They last... He lost his. He lost a lot of speed in the uh, on exiting the opening corner number ten. But by God, when he got to corner number one, he went really, really wide up in the wall, swung himself in, lost as little time as possible. Took a beautiful corner number two where he didn't actually hit the curb this time. He just tried to carry as much speed as he could. And, he, and then what, by the time he got to corner number three, we see him go inside in corner number six, and finally he has taken the place from Wes. That was a yeah. great move. He caught so so much speed coming through three, four, and five. They just set him up for call number six. Yeah, he set that one up just right. He didn't even have to worry about using the oval now. Now, hopefully, uh, Wes isn't uh, smarter in the oval and gets a good enough run to pass him. Yeah, as we see, uh, and he just light up the rears a little bit. I think uh, I don't think Wes is in the toe at the moment. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be close enough to uh, make any move. He might, he might be able to pull up a little bit on him, but. I don't think he's close enough to actually pull it to the inside or outside going into turn one and two. As Alexis gives uh, this battle a big old, uh, big old berth as he as he laps them once again. See that Paul Brennan and Paul Brennan is in the pits at the back. Of course, that affects just a bit of fuel. David Waters is also retired. Yeah, I saw he actually came into the uh, pits a few laps ago. It looked like maybe topping off fuel, but I, I, I guess he had to retire. So at the moment, um, we're looking at David Waters retired. Uh, John Montoya is still lapping, and he's just passed David, so he's now uh, he's now ahead of all the guys that retired. Pete Brennan's there in pits. Steve Brown blew his engine. 
Al Hang Hoi Tao had a massive accident in the first few laps and uh, had quite a big car, so decided to retire. We now have about 18 minutes left of the race. Yeah, this is uh, getting interesting again for the lead. Uh, Trace just ran a 29.0 that last lap. Looks like his tires might be uh, worn out a little bit. And Brian still running 28.4, 28.5, and is uh, catching him. Okay, so you can see Trace has been sliding around a little bit. This could give us a great last 15, 17 minutes of the race. Okay, so for everyone watching um, on the stream, down the bottom right hand side of the screen, you'll see a, uh, a time, the countdown timer. Just to let you know, there is a little bit of an offset um, between that time uh, that you see and the, the actual real time of the race. This is just because uh, we had to start under the pace car, and as such, iRacing sends the telemetry um, uh, to, the, to our streams. We see uh, Trace McRae just coming through corner number two. Brian Taylor's trying to rejoin the circuit and they almost touch. So yeah, as I said, there's going to be, when the uh, countdown reaches zero on the um, Glacier TV screen, you will uh, you'll have, to, we'll have to wait until about f uh, five minutes for the actual race to be flagged. So we'll just take you through that when it, when it comes up. Yeah, once it hits zero, it's actually going to start counting back up. So once it gets to about five minutes, that's when the actual actual flag is going to be thrown. Yeah, and then we'll wait for uh, we'll we'll see how the um, how the uh, how the uh, race actually comes to a close. I don't I don't see Trace chucking it away to be honest. No, I don't I don't see that at all. He almost got close there with uh, Brian Taylor rejoining, but uh, he just looks like he's running consistent times right now. Looks very experienced. You know, he knows what he's doing right now. And the gap is up to three seconds now between the first two guys. And I think Trace is managing this gap, to be honest with you. I don't think he's uh, overly worried about Brian behind him. Brian has yeah. opened up a uh, four-second gap between Oscar as well. It's almost like he was uh, listening to us because we said that, you know, Brian caught him half a second in one lap and then he goes and runs half a second faster than Brian the next. Yeah, yeah, and well, maybe just look down at his relative and notice that, uh, or his timing uh, telemetry that he gets oh. displayed. And then just Brian, Brian's actually spinning right now in uh, turn four. Made a mistake there, he just clipped the grass on entry into turn four and spun around. And that gives Oscar the opportunity to get right up behind him now as they're going down to call number six and I'm surprised that Oscar didn't use the opportunity just to get sort of up behind his bumper, really, just to try and get as close as we see him go whoa, very close into corner number six there. Certainly, Oscar had to do some lifting off there. So, Phil, doesn't look like this race is, uh, race is going to be over yet. Yeah, I guess... Uh, I mean, the, the, this, uh, this Mustang's not the easiest car to drive. It's it's very heavy and it's very just slippery across the track, and uh, it puts out some quite a decent amount of power. So when you get on the throttle and everything, you really have to to manage it well. As we see that the opportunity Oscar had to catch Brian up, it's actually been taken away really because he uh, had a bit of a um, bad corner with uh, Jarrett in call number eight. Where, um, where Jarrett Lawson just had the inside line and just sort of didn't yield it enough to the guy past him, the guy that's in a fight. So you have to slow down quite a bit and you've got a bit of a poor entry. And this is a 2.2 uh, mile circuit and uh, certainly the biggest sort of straight is that 9 to 1, is the old uh, corner number 9, all the way to 
corner number one uh, at the next lap as well. So if you really lose lose the speed coming out of eight, you're, you're compromised. Yeah, eight, eight pretty much the most important corner just because of that. I mean, not only is it a good p passing zone, but you also have to worry about getting a good exit. So even if the car you just passed, you need to have a good exit or who's just going to pass you right back in the oval. Okay, so gap now between Brian and Trace is all the way up to 7.3. So uh, Trace can literally just sort of, you know, put his feet up now. There's uh, about 12 minutes left of the, of the race. The sports touring uh, field in the league currently is Giancarlo Lenzi, who's been out there for pretty much most of the race, really, apart from that period where, where Wes Erwick was, um, was out after he took a very, very late pit stop. Eric Biggs in second position, Joseph Peaks in third, Jason Bryfogel in fourth, Ryan Worley is in fifth, Antti Turman is in sixth, and Wes Erwick in seventh. Eighth position is Jarrett Lawson, ninth is Chris Moran, tenth is... John Montoya, who is the last MX-5 still running. And Antti is the fastest MX-5 on track currently. Yeah, that's uh, it's quite interesting, actually. Posted a 136.7 in his last lap. And he certainly stretched a bit of a gap between uh, between himself and Wes as well. Yeah, as soon as he passed Wes, he he pulled a really big gap there. Actually, no, Wes is much closer than I was thinking. The two that still haven't uh, parted ways is Joseph Peake and Jason Bryfogel. Yeah, they've been uh, they've been on it for pretty much the entire race. The eight no, eight car of Joseph and the thirty four Jason. Yeah, it looks like Jason's not able to pull up onto the back of Joseph at all. I mean, I, I guess he's he's not close enough for the draft. But uh, uh, even even when he has been close enough, he's not really been able to to sort of challenge for the position. Yeah, they look just very, very similar speed in general. As we're now following Oscar, who's getting closer again. 129.6. And Oscar's 127.0. So hopefully Oscar's giving Brian enough to think about in his rear view mirror. Just so you know, a 27.0 would have been pole. He ran a 29.0 that last lap. Oh, did I say it wrong? Oh dear. 29.036, <laughs> yeah. It's, l it's late in UK. <laughs> That's my excuse. It's so alright, it's alright. As Oscar comes around corner number nine now, we have almost under 10 minutes left of the race. And Phil, has Wes responded to Antti's uh, anti lap times? Yeah, he's actually one of his faster laps. He just ran last lap. So the fuel load is um, paying some advantage to some of our lap times. Yeah, as I say that, actually, this lap here, he, he's kind of back to where he was. It's quite interesting. He he ran a lap that was only three tenths off his fastest lap. Uh, but then this last lap here, he just ran nearly 1.5 seconds slower than that. So the chase is and now on between Wes and Andy. I think there's pretty much half a straight uh, difference between them. 
between five and six. This really looks interesting uh, in the Grand Sport class because it, it seemed like first Trace was uh, maybe had overheated his tires and then Brian was catching him. And then as Brian got as close as he did to him, he started to make mistakes and it looked like he uh, roasted his tires. And now Oscar has come right back up onto the back of Brian again. Looks like uh, managing your tires is quite important. But do you think uh, do you think Oscar's going to have the pace to manage to pass Brian? Um, I don't know. I think he's going to need a little bit of help from traffic right now to be able to get close enough. And that's going to be a massive help because he's catching it an absolute train of MX-5s. And we see Chris, Jason, and Joseph, uh, Joseph Peak, Jason Bryfogel, and uh, Chris Moran are all up there. So uh, they've got to get past those guys. Yeah, I think they're going to be able to get them in the oval. Oh, oh look, Brian! Spins. And into the wall, Brian Stodback. He absolutely just ran wide on the curb and hit the grass, lit the rears up, and uh, that car's a few inches shorter than it was when it rolled off the production line. Yeah, so that's just big damage. Yeah, he was just trying to get on the power as fast as he could there. Going to uh, replay on board here. So a case of the commentator's curse there, Phil. Yeah. It looked like uh, he was actually already a little bit oversteer before he clipped the grass. And just clipping the grass there just unsettled the car even more. And by then it was it was gone. Of all the places that a wall had to be that place, you know. He just caught the grip and it shot across the track. Yeah, you'd think infields, they don't have walls, but uh, not here. <laughs> I mean, acres and acres of grass. So we're now following Giancarlo Lenzi, the leader of the sports touring t category. Yeah, he's solidly been leading all race long. He's probably had the, the most boring race in the world, just driving with no other cars near him. Yeah, you remember... For, for near on one hour, 25. Yeah, at the beginning he made a small mistake and Eric Biggs got around him and then he decided to pit early and when he did, I mean, I don't know if Eric Biggs was in a battle or Giancarlo was just able to put down good laps but he was able to get around him just in the pits alone. So there is our leader coming around uh, corner number two into the 3, 4 and 5 S complex. Last lap was 1 minute 35.9. It's probably driving fairly easy now because there must be uh, Mr. Biggs must have been anywhere near and we've seen Brian Brian is in the pits uh, I think he might be in there for a while Yeah, it's going to be a long pair on the front end of his car Jack Carl Lindsay, an absolute field of space. There's no, no car behind him, no car in front of him. He's literally hot lapping now, from now to the end of the race. Following Jason Bryfogel in his, uh, the never-ending battle between um, himself and Joseph Peake. It's still going. Yeah, it's, it's never going to end here. Do you reckon when the check flag goes out, they'll just carry on? I don't know. Uh, you could expect anything right now. You could expect uh, Jason to see that white flag and then pop off his best lap at the end here. <laughs> you really just never know. It's a Speaking fantastically consistent showing by Jason. Yeah, he's actually... Uh, last lap, he only ran two tenths off his best lap. That he actually ran only two laps before that. So he's... Uh, not only consistent, but he's running pretty fast times right now. So Brian Sobek has now retired from second position. 
which allows Kevin Brown, 33 seconds back from Trace McRae, to become the third placed Mustang driver. So he now has a spot on the podium in the Grand Sports category. Oh, Jason That's actually has a run here. Ah, but he breaks and then that, he loses so much time. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know the reason for breaking. I guess he's just wanting to set him up to get a good exit here. Which, uh, That's Joseph, what he has done. Yeah, Joseph instantly defended that entering uh, turn three. And the little flick there from the right left as well from uh, from Joseph was uh, a little bit more dramatic than uh, than Jason as well. So I thought it would give Jason the opportunity just to sort of drag him in by a few hundreds, thousandths per second. Yeah, Jason's being uh, really, really smooth here. Uh, I don't know if maybe that could have been maybe helping helping save his tires or anything like that, but he's not really that much quicker than Joseph, so doesn't seem to be that. Uh. Well, Chris Moran's got a pretty good um, pretty good seat in the house at the moment. He's sat behind this battle. So he's just sort of sat there lapping. He doesn't really want to get himself involved because he's uh, currently in ninth position and uh, about a lap down from, from these two guys. But he's just sort of watching these guys sort of dicing, getting closer. Yeah, uh, Joseph just got a huge run there off of turn eight. And uh, that's going to be really hard now for Jason to make back up. His last two laps, uh, Jason had actually caught eight tenths in total. So, and he just lost half a second there. So, he's definitely quicker. He just needs to, you know, be able to make a move on him. As Chris Moran, directly behind him, just went off there and turned two. Yeah, another casualty of turn two. And we can see that they're they're just starting to close up now through the through the twisty bits. And I think, I don't know, I'm going to tempt fate in commentator's curse, but I think it's pretty much settled now for the, uh, for the, for the rest of the race. This is really the only battle on the circuit currently. Yeah, it's about five minutes left in the race currently, and, and that's bound to happen really in a 90-minute race. S surprisingly, it's close as it is, really. Yeah, so you'll notice now the timer will have gone to zero. It should be counting up now. We're looking for about... Uh, 4 minute 58 and we'll catch to see when the uh, when the leader goes near the start finish straight we'll know when the last lap is a 136.3 from Jason and a 136.8 from so 133, 136.3 from, or 135.9 now from Jason Peake, and 135.8 from Jason. Kevin yeah, Brown, the third placed Mustang, has now caught up into the battle as well. Yeah, he actually missed together accident in turn two. You could uh, hear him over revving. I was just about to say, uh, he's either going to interrupt this battle or make it really interesting. Well, you know, I'd be, uh, be terrible if you say that I'd prefer the latter. <coughs> okay, so after the race today, we're looking at the next round is at the Virginia, the, sorry, the Virginia International Speedway in two weeks' time. That will be shown on Glacier TV. I say I'll get in nice and close now. Late breaks. Yeah, Kevin didn't want to push anything there, it seems. No, but that was very late breaking from Jason. And he's gone high now on the oval to let these guys pass. I'm surprised he didn't dip back in a little sooner, try and get the toe from Kevin Brown.
Yeah, if we thought uh, this place was hairy, then Virginia International Raceway in two weeks is going to be uh, <laughs> very uh, entertaining for some and uh, hard up for others. Chris Moran has shot wide in corner number two again. Yeah, he's just he's just uh, working on his rally skills a little bit. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Must like that uh, the noise of gravel in the in the wheel arches. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just throwing the dirt on the track for other drivers. It's, you know. it's all tactical. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so we, I think we've got to, I calculate we've got about a couple of minutes left in the race. And I'm surprised. Uh, I'm surprised that Jason's not done his sort of last dual dive, sort of uh, last ditch sort of braking, really, just to try and get himself a little bit closer. He's not taking any risks. He's just trying to ease himself closer and closer to Joseph. Yeah, he's still once again not close enough to get a big enough slipstream, really. Now, as I say that, he actually has a quite a bit of a slipstream here. He's just been caught by another Mustang as well. Yeah, he's going to run the cool. outside. Ooh. <laughs> that was pretty fun to watch, actually. That was an, the ultimate surprise moment, wasn't it? He just got quite a wide little uh, flick in the corner number one. I think he's closed up a bit of space now. He's so got a wide entrance into corner number three, looking for the late apex. Okay, so we're following Trace for Crane now in what should be his last lap. Or what the start of his last lap, this should be the start of the white flag. You see him come down start finish. Very high principle. Yeah, he beat the timer there by uh, about 11 seconds. So this is his last stop here for sure. So this is quite fitting, we've got Trace McRae followed directly by Giancarlo Lindsay. These are the two class leaders at Homestead Miami Road B. Yeah, they're just making our job easy. Yeah, that's fantastic. Everyone get a screenshot, everyone get a photograph. And if you're going to be one of the, uh, if you're going to be Jarrett Lawson, you're going to want Trace to get past you pretty quick. And if you're at, at Alexis Molina as well, you know, you don't want to be doing another lap after the leader's finished. Especially <laughs> if you're yeah. low on fuel. Are we going to see anyone run out of fuel, do you think? Uh, I don't know. Some people are doing splash and, splash and dash. So, so, yeah, it could be a possibility, that's for sure. Uh, hopefully there's no one behind them, you know, to pass them if they do run out of fuel. So, Trace McRae is on the... Corner number nine now, the last banking of the race. So it just comes down to corner number ten, exits the banking, and he is now over the start finish straight. Trace McRae is the winner of round number three of the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series. Yeah, Giancarlo uh, Lindsay finishes uh, first in the ST class. So that was an excellent drive. Um, looks like Oscar has also crossed the line in second position. And Ke Kevin Brown is just entering the bank in for a well-earned third place, a third place. Yeah, Eric Biggs actually right behind him for uh, second in the ST class. And there's a, a veritable gaggle of MX fires with John Montoya and Antti Tumerman there as well. Russell Cleason just crossed the line. Where's Eric as well? And uh, Joseph Peake. Oh, what happened to Jason, actually? He's oh, a Jason's out of fuel. <laughs> wow. Terrible, terrible end of the race for Jason Bryfogel as he's yeah. just coasting. Ryan Worley actually uh, has passed him for position, but I don't know of anybody else. Jarrett Lawson would have. However, he got lapped by uh, Trace McRae. 
on the oval right before passing the finish line. So what a terrible in the race for Jason Bryfogel. Eric Briggs yeah. has just said in chat that he finished on fumes. Yeah, I thought I heard his car skipping. I thought he was just slowing down, slowing down there at the finish line. Looks like he's just got enough to push himself over the line. Okay, so the final order for today's race in the Grand Sports Division. In first position was Trace McRae, second was Oscar Salin, third position was Kevin Brown, fourth was Russell Cleason, fifth was J.D. Bongardner, in sixth position Alexis Molina, seventh position was Bill Daly, eighth position was Brian Taylor. In the Sports Touring category, first place was Janko Lindsay, second Eric Biggs, third is Joseph Peake, fourth Ryan Worley, fifth is Jason Byfogel, just running out of fuel in sixth position Jarrett Lawson, seventh Antti Turinen, eighth position Wes Erwicks, ninth is Chris Moran, tenth is John Montoya, and in eleventh place was Peter Brennan. The retirees, Brian Stobback we saw hit the wall at the uh, penultimate um, call, uh, third of the race, Peter Brennan is also, also retired, David Waters, Steve Brown and and Hang Ho Tao retired. Right, okay, so that was a cracking into a 90 minute race. That was actually uh, a very good race. And we've been joined by the winner for the Sports Touring Division. Let's just see if he's able to speak. Welcome to the booth, Giancarlo. Hey, thank you. So, did you uh, did you enjoy that victory? I'm sorry. What was that? Congratulations on the victory. Um, it seems like a um, a, bit, a bit of an easy one for you. You had a little bit of a battle where uh, once all the pit stops sort themselves out, but for now on in, it seemed to be plain sailing. Actually, that's that's what really uh, saved it was that uh, early pit stop. Uh, Eric and you know, Jared were putting up really good pace, and you know they're great drivers, and they're really giving me a good fight. Uh, had you know, just had to go for that early pit stop and hope to make it stick. Uh, and it put me about five, six seconds ahead of them, which I was kind of worried about. But uh, they, they, you know, the consistency. I was really working on it this this week, and uh, really paid off. And how did you um, how did you get on with the Mustangs out there? Oh, they're they're awesome. You know, they were uh, you know every time they would come <laughs> come around on uh, NASCAR four, I'd you know kind of hook in behind them and get that great draft, and it would just give me so much of a, a draft coming back in to uh, start finish. It just sets you up great. We worked out that there was about a ten mile an hour difference um, with the draft round uh, round nine and nine and ten. Did you, you you say you found that a lot? But when we were watching um, other cars, certainly some of the battles between the MX fives, we we find that much uh, that much of a toe. Uh, I would say it's that much. Uh, you're, you're definitely gaining about three or four tenths a lap if you're uh, you, you know you're drafting on this, and you know if you're following somebody like Eric or Jared or you know even Jason or Ryan, you know you, you as soon as you get that draft, you're you're three or four tenths faster a lap. And if you keep that up lap after lap, and that guy behind you, he's just going to start passing you. And so there's definitely a, a huge advantage to that. It's just, uh, you know, nobody around me, nothing exciting for me, for, for my race, to have, have to battle anybody after the uh, pit. So I had to rely on the, um, the uh, Mustangs. And looking forward now, we've done a uh, we've done a road at Daytona Road. Then we did the Skip Barber, uh, which is the road course. Now this is uh, Homestead done and dusted, and we're moving on to Virginia International Raceway next. Are you looking forward to that? Oh, massively. Uh, I on, honestly I don't race uh, Virginia all that much, but uh, last year there was the uh, Targa Virginia, which uh, was was thrown up, and I participated in that. And that was a great great race. Uh, that was obviously Grand East. Uh, I'm not sure what what uh, configuration we're running next week or in two weeks, but uh, definitely looking forward to it. it. It's a great track. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of times everybody else can put up there, and uh, hopefully James Stevenson can come back that race and uh, put up more of a show for for you guys. Well, that that's fantastic. It was James Stevenson couldn't make the. Um 
couldn't make the race today. So this this looks to be a good chance for you guys to gain some points back in the championship. Yeah, you know, me and Ryan, we're we're really working hard. Uh, Team Northwest is is a great bunch of guys. You know, Kevin Brown, Chris Moran, uh, Ryan Worley, Team Northwest. Shout out to the, them. You know, fast guys, really talented, and really working on those points to get back up there. Excellent. Is there anyone else? Uh, anyone else you wish to thank as well? Oh, uh, Wes Eric for you know throwing this on. Um, and, and our uh, stand-in marshal, Scott Myers, you know, it was a fantastic race. You know, really shout out to everybody that did the race. It was just awesome. It was fantastic. Thank you very much, Giancarlo. And speaking about Wes, I think Wes is around somewhere. Hello and welcome to Wes. Welcome to the commentator's booth and congratulations on your race. Thank you so much, Wes. Um, we, we saw some excellent uh, battles between you and Antti Turunen in, uh, in the middle of the MX-5 um, sports touring field. Um, tell me, how, how much fun was that out there? Oh man, that was a complete blast. I, I, I told him after the race I felt a little bit bad because I'm sure I was holding him up. I didn't have quite the pace that he did, but man, I was trying to keep my car wide and I was tucking down to the inside coming into turn one so he didn't get a run on me there. And <laughs> I saw him dart in, dart out. <laughs> he would try to catch me on the infield. <laughs> he was doing everything he possibly could. And I was just completely in defensive mode at that point. But, man, that was a lot of fun. And we saw as well um, throughout the race that you, uh, you actually did quite a few um, lead laps in the first sort of 17 or so minutes. How good is it to be out front? Oh, that, that was awesome. I uh, I think I started with a little bit more fuel than everyone. I knew that, you know, through the practices and stuff, Homestead seemed to be pretty clean. And we had a little bit smaller field today, so I thought maybe we'd get some longer green flag runs. So I went a little heavy on fuel. And I think that's what, you know, let me uh, stay out a little bit longer. I, I waited until the very last possible lap to do my uh, mandatory pit stop. But, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun to get out in front of some of these other guys who I'm used to just looking at their back. <laughs> And uh, how did you find um, how did you find the Mustangs? Man, everybody played really well, um, well together. You know, most of the passing came out on the oval, at least with me. Um, I did let some people through, uh, through on the uh, infield, but and everything was very, very calm, very nice. Um, I didn't have any trouble with, with any of them. It was really nice. Fantastic. And move on to the next round at Virginia International Raceway. Are you uh, you're looking forward to that circuit, or is it uh, one of your favorites? I absolutely love VIR. I don't know. There's a lot of people on iRacing who don't, I guess maybe because it's a difficult course. But I love the track in real life, and I love it in iRace. So yes, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And have you got uh, any, any predictions? <laughs> well, judging by the first three races, uh, I would say that if they show up, Trace and Brian in the GS class are going to you know, always give us a good run. And then the ST guys, if James Stevenson gets back, and then Ryan Worley, Giancarlo Lenzi, all the, uh, the usual suspects, if you will, um, I'm sure we'll put together another, another good run here in two weeks. And that was an unfortunate race for Brian, because obviously Brian got a little bit hot coming out of, um, of one of the corners and just hit the wall. So that put him out from second place. Yeah, I, I saw that he, he fell down in the standings. That, you know, I was paying attention to my mirrors a little bit, but I, I actually didn't know what happened with that, with that. Okay, looks like we have quite a lot of drivers now joining us. Everybody so I think wants we're gonna crackers have to... and champagne. Absolutely. Right, who should we get through first? Mr. Peak. Joseph Peak, welcome to the commentator's booth. Hey, guys. <laughs> Joseph, you were a man who... Um, you were a driver who fought, it, it seemed like, the entire race behind, behind and in front of Jason Bryfogel. How good was that? Uh, it was intense, to say the least. Um, I uh, thought maybe I could leave him behind after I got by, and then the draft just made it achingly hard to uh, keep him, you know, to break away from him. And how did you, um, how did you find the, the draft around the banking? Um, great when I was behind him. Terrible when I was in front of him. <laughs> and I didn't see it. When you were in front of him, you didn't really have much of an opportunity to take your eyes off the rear view mirror. No, there was uh, definitely a number of times I had to go defensive. And uh, 
I, there was a couple times where I was having to defend, and there was a Mustang coming through, and I was I was getting ready for a wreck to happen, but we managed to make it clean. Well, fantastic! And uh, just just moving forward on to uh, um, the next the next round, are you looking forward to it? Absolutely. I'm uh, hoping for more podiums. Maybe a lucky win. Excellent. Fantastic. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much to Joseph Peake, Giancarlo, and Wes. We're just going to bring in um, Peter Brennan now. Welcome, Peter. Welcome to the booth. Thank you very much. Talk us through your race. Uh, well, for me, it was a rather interesting race. Uh, I actually had to watch my two-year-old daughter during the race, so I had a few more pit stops than usual uh, to tend to her needs. Uh, basically, I'm the rolling mobile chicane in the series. Uh, we've got very good talent, very fast drivers at the sharp end of the stick. I'm not one of them, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, well, okay. And moving on to um, Virginia International Raceway, you, you're looking forward to it? Uh, I certainly am. I've actually raced most of the uh, series track or the tracks used in this series in a Mustang, and I was looking to drive the Miata or the MX-5 uh, since the Mustang and myself don't do very well. I'm very uh, ham-fisted with it. Uh, the Miata is a much more natural fit for me, especially as I'm using an Xbox controller, an Xbox 360 at that. Oh wow! Well, so you you um, how many other of you guys run uh, run controllers? I don't know how many run controllers in this Continental Endurance Sports Car Series, but when I was running Mustang Challenge, I knew at least one or two other drivers, and they were actually rather quite well with it. <laughs> I think uh, it's, so, uh, so is it safe to say you're the fastest controller driver out there in the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series? Uh, well, considering I'm probably the only one, I guess that's a fair statement. <laughs> more champagne, I think. More champagne. Right. Thank you very much for joining us, Peter. We're going to bring in uh, someone else now. And the chat we're bringing in is a gentleman who finished in third position. Um, welcome to the booth, Kevin Brown. Uh, thanks, guys. And uh, how did you find that race? Because uh, obviously um, you were running uh, fourth for a lot of the a lot of the end, end of the uh, race, and uh, Brian had an accident in front of you, so that boosted you back up onto the podium. Yeah, that was good luck for me. Obviously, it was bad luck for Brian. Um, we actually had some minor contact when I came out of pit lane. We just barely brushed, and apparently it damaged him a little bit, and it seems like it uh, caused him enough trouble that he wound up spinning. So I feel bad for that for Brian. He had had a great run. Okay, and um, how, aside from that, how did you find your race? It was a tough one. It was pretty quiet. Um, you know, it was uh, really close for the first several laps, and then uh, Trace and Brian and Oscar after the pit were just uh, were just gone. And then uh, I wound up just trying to keep my, my lead in front of J.D. and Russell, and they just kept closing in and closing in, and I got pretty lucky there. Okay, and uh, you obviously you're the first uh, Mustang driver we've had a chance to um, interview after the race. So how did you find the... Um, How'd you find the Miata drivers? Oh, they're all great. You know, uh, the closing speed is so, so high in the banking and in a couple of the places. And they're all just really good about staying out of the way when needed or giving lots of room. And I just can't give them enough compliments. Right, okay. And uh, are you looking forward to Virginia and Tesla Raceway? Oh, absolutely. That's one of my all-time favorite tracks, and it's just uh, so much fun to drive in the Mustang. That's going to be a great, great race. Fantastic. Right. Okay. Well, thanks very much uh, for joining us today, Kevin. I think we're going to bring in, well, the gentleman who came first today. Welcome to the commentator's booth, Trace. Thank you. How did you find that race? It was another race where you, uh, you had to do a lot of hard charging to catch down the leader. Well, it was uh, it was tough again. It wasn't easy, that's for sure. Brian's fast, and I don't know what happened to him. I honestly don't know. I have to go back and look at it. So. Well, Brian just caught a uh, just caught the grass coming out of um, I think it was one of the slow corners. Maybe I think it's corner number six. Uh, just lit up the rears and then just uh, shot straight on into into the wall, um, making this car shorter by a few inches. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I almost did that myself several times, but. It was a good race. Uh, I was definitely worried that he was coming. So. Okay then, so uh, this is a, 
a good a good victory for you, Trace. Are you looking forward to uh, Virginia International Raceway? I think so. I think I finally got a handle on it. Excellent. And how did you find the uh, battle? Because we saw you uh, dicing with Oscar Salin for a um, for a lot of the race, where you you were catching him up and you passed him under under call number two, I think, where he had a um, he had a bit of an off. I believe so. I wasn't sure what happened to him exactly. I caught the tail end, and I was watching the apex, and then I seen him off the track. But it was uh, it wasn't for traffic. I don't know if I would have got there to be honest with you. It was it was dicey at times, but everybody's pretty good about getting out of the way and trying to leave room. So. Well, excellent, excellent. Okay, and um, on to Virginia International Raceway next. It looks like it's going to be a fantastic race for you guys. Um, thank you very much to the guys who join us today, to Giancarlo, Joseph, uh, Trace and Wes. We have some more guys. Uh, we, I don't know if we're going to have enough time to um, to catch them, are we, uh, Yoni? Oh, okay, so terribly sorry about that, but we've uh, we've had to run a little bit longer now. Um, well, thanks for joining us, guys. It's been a fantastic, um, fantastic race. I think uh, myself and Phil Diaz, my co-commentator, have enjoyed it, mate, enjoyed it greatly. I hope everyone watching has enjoyed it. Appreciate it, and great job, guys. I had to watch it again. Yeah, thanks a lot, and good job to all the drivers. Grass and Trace. And uh, i got to do a shout-out to uh, Fnatic for, for their awesome wheel shifter and pedal set. Oh, okay, right. Uh, anyone else want to get any shout-outs? Yes, uh, I'd want to give a shout out to Plum Street Productions and also clarify that that's what Plum Street is because I know you guys were confused about that. I, you're absolutely right. I did. I remember in the in the Daytona broadcast, I thought it was a street plum, like a hip plum. <laughs> I'd like to give one final shout out to our series sponsor, Safecraft Racing, Charles Espinlob. Okay. Right then, Phil. How did you how did you find the race, Phil? This is your this is your first commentary for Glacier TV. No, I found it uh I found it really good. There's always stuff happening, changes for the uh the lead in both classes at times and just battles everywhere really. Oh, fantastic. Okay then, so all I can all th think is left to say, well, thanks for joining us guys. It's been a fantastic race and onwards till two weeks time when we have Virginia International Raceway for the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series, sponsored by Safe Car Racing, your home for safety harnesses, belts and head nets. Drive fast, be safe, Safe Car Racing.